Hi and welcome to the Cult TV Sofa. This is a reaction video for the first episode of Season 1 of my new reaction show Stargate SG-1. You can check out the full reaction for this video on my new Patreon channel. Check out the link in the description below. This is the first watch of the show, but I have seen the film. I actually did a re-watch of the film and I was going to have that on here first, but I had a technical problem and the sound didn't record and I couldn't face do it again. So I'm going to go straight into the show itself, but I will summarise the film now, but I warn you, it's a long one. So we saw a spaceship land on Earth 10,000 years ago. I have no idea how they got the camera footage of that happening, but I saw it on the screen, so it must be true. A boy approached the ship and was taken inside. We then fast forward to Egypt in 1928 when an archaeological dig uncovers a metallic appearing ring buried in the ground which is approximately 10,000 years old. We then jump to today where we see Dr Daniel Jackson giving a presentation to other Egyptologists where he claims that the Egyptians didn't build the pyramids but he doesn't know who did. That didn't go down too well. Leaving the building, after being ridiculed for his ideas, the daughter of the archaeologist who discovered the ring in 1928 offers Daniel a job to translate something and prove his ideas. After his son was killed by accidentally shooting himself, a very low Colonel Jack O'Neill has his service reactivated by the Air Force. Daniel arrives at a secret military installation and is led down to see the cover stone that was found in Giza. He immediately fixes the translations that the team have been working on for two years. After a few weeks, he works out that the writing on the cover stone are actually coordinates to a location in space. He solves a problem that the team have been stalled on, which is when he's then shown the Stargate itself. We discover that the Stargate is a portal to another planet. Daniel joins a team led by Colonel O'Neill to go through the gate and arriving on the other side they find themselves in a pyramid in a desert on a planet with at least three moons so unlikely to be Earth. Daniel then drops the bombshell that he cannot find the address to get home so they're trapped there for now. They discover a large number of people who speak an old dialect of the language spoken in ancient Egypt on Earth. Whilst half the team are interacting with the locals, the other half are visited by the same or similar ship that visited Earth so long ago. They are all either killed or captured and taken inside the ship. With the help of a girl called Shori, Daniel discovers that the ship enslaved thousands of people when it visited Earth so long ago. They left the Stargate so that slaves could be transported to this planet to work, but the slaves on the planet, on, sorry, on Earth, revolted and buried the gate so it could no longer be used, and the people on the planet remained and became the population we see today. The team return to the pyramid and are also captured and taken into the ship to meet the alien Ra, who appears to be the boy that was taken when the ship first came to Earth. Unknown to the team, Jack had a nuclear bomb hidden in their equipment, as you do, and his orders were to use it to destroy the gate if they found hostiles on the other side. Ra had found the bomb and was going to send it back to Earth with some of the mineral that the gate was made of, which would amplify the explosion 100 fold. The people rose up against Ra again and as his ship was leaving, the team were able to send the bomb up to Ra's ship as he tried to escape using their transporter, uh, sorry, a transportation device, causing a very big bang in space. What was left of the team went home through the gate after Daniel found the address to return, but Daniel decided to remain on the planet with Shori. So let's see what happens in this first episode. I'm going to put any relevant trivia that I find over here and at the end of the reaction I'll be discussing what happened and my thoughts about it and I'm going to start it in three, two, one. And the Jack gets a box. Okay, so looks like they're guarding the 
Stargate. Um, doesn't look like it's being used anyway. It's all covered up. Uh, and they're just there making sure everything's okay. Yeah, it looks like they ran out of that. They've been shipping personnel out of here for months. So they've been winding down the project. Can we take that as a fold? Level 28. So that implies it's 28 floors down because we saw uh, Daniel in the film get into the lift. They entered the compound and they went down quite a long way in the lift. So that is a long way down. Nice reveal. <laughs> and it would. That's quite cool because the rings rotating. Um, it, that tarpaulin sort of thing flicked off and it probably would because it would have caught on the ring and as the ring rotated it would have flicked it off but it looked really cool and I'm sure it, it wasn't the simple, I bet they did um, they had probably something attached to it and they pulled it off but it, it worked really well, I don't remember it glowing uh, in the film, I could be wrong it looks really cool, so simple it's just a ring but it looks so cool I wonder if they were there, well, I don't know how long after this is, after the film, um, and I wonder if they were there when it first was activated. Um, so do they know what it is and what it does, or have they just been told to guard it with no information on it and what it actually does? And I mean, when Colonel O'Neill and the others returned, what happened? After that, I mean, it looks like some time's passed. Yeah, I assume we'll find out, but I, I just don't know how long has passed, time-wise. So that's like one of the soldiers we saw in the film. There's a load of them. <laughs> so there... In the film, their uh, headpiece is completely sort of uh, these animation to make them fold up and completely disappear. These are actual bit more mechanical. They're just designed just to open like a helmet. Obviously, it's cheaper for them to do that. <laughs> oh, that's quite cool. Oh, so why is he saving the woman? Ah, so they have got weak points in the armor. Okay, so even though there's a small guard in the actual room, there's a lot more soldiers ready to come down. So we saw the alien in the film, his eyes glowed. So is he meant to be Colonel West? I think it was the... Um, no, not Colonel General West. He was the guy in charge of the project. Sir, there's a ladder over here. Why would you knock on the door and then say there's a ladder over here? Why would you see the ladder and assume he's up there? Retire. So that's Jack O'Neill. I'm under orders to bring you to see General Hammond, sir. Never heard of him. He replaced General West? Ah, replaced has to do with the Stargate. So, Richard Anderson, I, know, I used to watch MacGyver. Richard Dean Anderson. So, if you look at the, um, at the stars, I wonder if that sort of... when he returned, that sort of sparked his interest. Now he sort of looks at the stars. He's, he's now interested in space because of... he was on another planet. <laughs> uh, it's at sub-level 11, but... say the door said level... 23, I think it was. Oh, let's go down again. Take a second elevator the rest of the way, sir. Right. Okay. God, two elevators. Uh. Uh, of course. Okay, so that implies it's the same place, it's just we're seeing different shots. They've just changed it for the TV series. And that's a different general to the film. Major Samuels mentioned something about the Stargate. Down to business. I can do that. 
It's a pretty big thing. I think it's probably a good idea to get down to business. Best we can tell, these slits are actually a pouch, similar to that found in a marsupial. But your report said this raw was in fact some kind of alien that lived inside a human body. Are you sure he's dead, Colonel? Oh. Unless he could survive a tactical nuclear warhead blowing up in his face. I'm positive. Okay. I thought that. So, obviously they've been recast in. So, was that Ra? Did he not die? Or was it another alien? Is that Kowalski and Ferretti? Yes. They were under your command on the first Stargate mission. So, they're two of the soldiers who returned, who went to the planet, and, came, and they're, well, they're survivors. Was there only three of them survived? Uh, plus Daniel Jackson, who stayed on the planet. I, was, I think it was only three of them who returned, which is, so that's all of them. You read the report? Yes. It's all there. Is it? So what did, story did they tell? Your orders were to go through the Stargate to detect any possible threat to Earth, and if found, Blow it up. detonate a nuclear device and destroy the gate on the other side. Which you didn't do. To the best of your knowledge... Daniel Jackson and everyone else you knew on Abydos is dead, correct? No. That's correct. He lied. Then you won't mind if I authorize a go-ahead on our plan. So, I was wondering what they put in their report, because his orders were to blow up the Stargate if they found hostiles. So he came back, well, they all came back through the gate without half the team and Daniel Jackson, and they put in their report that they did detonate the bomb after they came through blowing up the gate and everything which obviously isn't what happened they blew up the ship that Ra was on um, I, we thought killing him and we saw him quite to graphic detail his flesh falling off um, so I don't, so don't know whether it's him or another alien this quartz material the Stargates are made of it must be tough stuff if it can withstand a Mark III. Well, we sent a robot probe through after we got back, sir. It was flattened on the other end. Ah, okay. well, that makes sense that they would then send something through to check. So did they, when the team had gone through the gate, did they then, on Daniel's side, bury the gate? Um so that it would look like well partly so it would look like to earth that um it had been destroyed or wrecked but also to stop anyone else coming through the gate another bomb You're sending another bomb mark five this time ah general you can't do that countdown's already started Unless you have something to add. He knows. <laughs> that little smirk. I regret to inform you that my report was not entirely accurate. Daniel Jackson is alive and living with the people on Abydos. Well, maybe not. People of Abydos are no threat to us. They deserve to be left alone. Well, the thing is, though, we've seen aliens come through the gate. So who knows what's happened at the other side in that year. There might be another alien that's moved in and taken over the mining operations. So yeah, you get rid of one hostile, someone else has taken over. Which looks like what's happened. After we came home, Daniel buried the gate in rocks. Right. Take hey, Colonel O'Neill to the holding room. Let's give him some time to think about things while I decide what to do with him. So they are going to send the bomb through. A more powerful bomb. Did they say it was a Mark III they originally had? This is a Mark V. No idea what the yields difference would be. A retired Kowalski lose the salute. So Kowalski was one of the people on the original team. Weird name. What was it? Scar. Remember how he was always saluting you? Yeah. So that's the kid you kind of befriended. My kid used to do that when he was little. That's... They did seem to be... He did seem to have like a fatherly thing for him at the end. And he just said that... Um, uh, for uh, kind of Scara, the kid uh, on in the film, um, yeah, he was always saluting him, and he gave him his lighter, um, and that's another reason that he got with him. He said his kid always used to salute him, and unfortunately, his child accidentally shot himself, so he obviously 
felt a connection with, with that boy on the planet. Let me take a team through that gate. Kowalski and I have been there before. We know the lay of the land. We know the people. You think you know. Jackson could be dead. You don't know what you'd be walking Yeah, through. a lot happened there, yeah. Ah, upgraded the weapons. That would get through the armor on those uh, soldiers. Jackson has allergies. Thank you. You'll know this came from me and not from someone like yourself. Hmm. Good idea. Oh, that's cool. The keyboard has um, symbols on it rather than keys, on the letters. Um, object should reach final destination in five seconds. Four. So don't get. Uh, I said in the film, I don't understand how they track it. Sir, this could take some time. Yeah, because the pyramid was actually a fair distance away from where the people were living. So I would have. I would have thought, like Earth, they probably keep a few people near the gates just to keep an eye on things. So. If something came through the gate, they would have to go and take it to the people and then come back. So, yeah, it's going to be hours at least. So the setup is very similar to the film. You had that view-in room above. <laughs> Permission to take a team through the Stargate, sir. Consider yourself a call to active duty, Colonel. He is the natural person to send. Well, to be honest, with his relationship with Daniel Jackson, he's the only person to send, even after lying on the report. So it's got a different tone to this, well, to this episode anyway, than the film. There's a lot more humour in it. Um, and um, uh, O'Neill is... Um, his personality seems quite different. He's much more... I don't know, he's just not as straight as he was in the film. I'm assigning Sam Carter to this mission. Carter's our expert on the Stargate. Where is he transferring from? She is transferring from the Pentagon. <laughs> but of course you go by Sam. You don't have to worry, Major. I played with dolls when I was a kid. G.I. Joe? Oh, Major Matt Mason. For those of you on your first trip through the gate, you should be prepared for what to expect. I think what the Colonel is saying is... Have you ever pulled out of a simulated bombing run in an F-16 at 8 plus G's? Yes. <laughs> he wasn't expecting to take that. To the other side, you're frozen stiff. Okay, um, and when the, the uh, tissues came back, it looked like it had uh, like a frosting on it, because they wiped it off. So you, you get cold going through. It's all to the compression your molecules undergo during the millisecond required for reconstitution. Okay. But I still say the safest, most logical way to deal with this is to bury the Stargate. Except it won't work. They've got ships, General. And they've been to Earth before. Don't you think maybe we should use the Stargate to do a little reconnaissance before they decide to come back? Again. We didn't see uh, the, the ships. We didn't see any weaponry on the ships. So, But we know a nu one nuclear missile on the inside can take them out. Um... So yeah, if one ship or war turned up, could we take it out? Uh, do we have the sort of the ability um, to do that? I didn't say we did it before, but there was an element of surprise then. I'd say that was just one ship. I might have loads. I'll give you exactly 24 hours to either return or send a message through. 24 hours is a long time. This time you bring Daniel Jackson back. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Oh, he might not want to go. But the energy the gate must release to create a stable wormhole is... So it is a wormhole. So, I don't think it was explained in the film, but again, in the reaction, which you, you can't see, um, I did say it must be a wormhole, so they got... Um, basically, the gate opens on Earth, it opens on the planet, uh, which forms that connection between the two um, and then you basically travel what she said your molecules are compressed so you you enter the through the portal um, you basically get compressed down 
transmitted to the uh, the gate transmits you it's like a transporter basically of a long distance um so at the gate ah, i'll explain this you pass through that portal and then the gate must compress you down into little bits sends you through the wormhole and then the gate at the other end puts you back together again like the transporters and star trek um and and then you, you reappear the other side um carrying the same momentum that you had going through so if you walk through with your right leg um when you exit the other side your right leg will come out first you kind of it, it's literally what you were doing at the one end you would be doing at the other end um so yeah wormholes artificial wormholes <laughs> Thing is, like I said, at the other side though, she's gonna kind of stumble out. She might fall over. So that looks like the same animation they used in the film. So yeah, we're kind of going through a wormhole. Again, like I said, in the film though, um, I don't think they'd be aware of that travel. Um, like she said, you, you're compressed down. I think it'd be instantaneous. You you go through it. Um, and reappear the other side, and that would just be as if you just literally stepped through um, in an instant. I, I don't think they said how long it takes to travel, um, the, the actual travel time. Although, when we saw the, the box of tissues go through, we saw that system tracking it, um, that's probably a realistic time of it would take to go through so we're looking at how long was that five seconds so seconds for it to actual for you for you to actually travel the distance so yeah so they got a little camp there so people are there guarding or watching the gate which makes sense where are they though Chahari. Chahari. Uh, recast daniel jackson he looks like him. Oh, that's the same kid. Scarra. Come on here. Yeah. <laughs> I did not think to be seeing you again. <laughs> oh, speaking English. Daniel's taught him. Sorry, don't be shy. So, that's a different actress, though, I think. Why the militia? Did something else come through? No, we're just taking precautions. Why? Nothing else came through. And they've been watching, which means, and again, I said this in the film, they didn't come from there. So I likened the Stargate to like a telephone. Basically, you, you dial your, it's still a dial in, so they do as well, just don't say it. Um, you dial the phone number or the address um, for that gate and you get through to it. But there are other phones, other Stargates. Um, so those soldiers and that um, the guy with the glowing eyes didn't come from here. They came from somewhere else. Uh, and that makes sense for the TV series. It means they can go lots of different places. So that makes logical sense. It took us 15 years and three supercomputers to MacGyver a system for the gate on Earth. Ha! <laughs> MacGyver! <laughs> well, they didn't come from here. I mean, the boys take shifts guarding at 36 hours a day every day. We 36 hours a day. The days are longer. Uh, we were about to have our evening meal. Why don't you join us? See, I'd have thought they should have dialed back to Earth just to give a quick update to say, um, we're here, we're safe, everything looks okay at the moment, um, we'll get back to you. It seems silly to wait 24 hours. They should be given a, a quick update and then find out more information fair enough that doesn't quite make sense to me i would have ordered them to as soon as they got through dial back um immediately so i wonder how the i don't know how the stargates are powered no <laughs> i wonder what the power system is for them Thank you. he does have like fatherly feelings for him both <laughs> Him as a son, him as a father. Like Ra, he must have come through another gate. 
What other game? Uh, Stargate? I, I was there. We ran hundreds of permutations. But you didn't have what you need. Okay. So, they tried different, hundreds of different combinations and they never worked. What, what do we, they need? As Daniel said. He does have a good James Spader thing going on. He does look like him. So I, I figured that there had to be more to this place, so I started exploring. Uh, um, yeah. Just the area around the town and the pyramid. I thought he'd he'd be looking in for the buildings and looking at everything and sort of looking at the history of everything. So this actually makes perfect sense. What's it say? Well, uh, it doesn't say anything. It's sort of a chart, more of a map. They're all addresses. Cartouches seem to be separated clearly into groupings. Each grouping is attached to the others with a series of lines, and each grouping of glyphs contains seven symbols. So you seven symbols to plot a course to a location in space. You need six points of reference, uh, which, when they all uh, intersect, pinpoint an exact position. But the seventh is the starting point. So if you have those six all uh, intersected at one point and your starting point, you then have a, a line, a course to plot. I only saw the film the other day, so I remember it all this. Um, so by having seven symbols, um, that's the address for other gates. Other... Yeah, no, I was going to say other planets, but no, it's other gates. Because um, you have to have the gate for it to work. I'm just thinking of loads of issues, though, with this. How that would work. Well, that means that the seven symbols wouldn't work on Earth. The six would. I assume you just replace the seventh with the symbol for Earth. I don't know what order they're in. Is it always like the bottom one is the seventh symbol? So that's always the starting point. In which case, you just need the six symbols. And then whichever plan you're on, you insert the seventh. That kind of makes sense. I've also managed to, to chart some of them in the Abydos night sky, or at least pretty close. Ooh. A vast network of stargates. Stargates that are, are all over the galaxy. Okay. He says he's plotted them because the symbols are constellations. So I suppose if you... Oh, I don't know if he could do it, but if you knew where all... Looking up in the sky, where all the constellations were, I suppose you could kind of get a rough idea, but you, with the technology and stuff he's got then, I don't think he'd be able to do like a, a proper three-dimensional precise location he could probably estimate where in the general part of the sky um, the address goes to but it could be anywhere down a huge corridor of um, three dimensional space that you're looking at so uh, doesn't quite make sense there's so much for me to think about this one. This is the kind of stuff I love thinking about. So this is going to be really cool. All the sort of the, the, the technical side and thinking about how everything works. I enjoy doing this, so this is going to be good. I've been meaning to watch Stargate SG-1 for ages. It's one of those shows, well, and the spin-offs, but that was the problem. It's one of those shows that I think it started on Sky, and I didn't have Sky uh, in the UK. Um, and then it kind of went on for a bit and then I think it was then on channel 4 uh, um, one of our standard just public channels um, but I didn't get around to watching it then and then it just got it went on for so long and then the spin-offs happened and then it was just too much for me to watch I just never got around to it um, so this is the say, perfect timing to do this but I wish I'd watched it before Look, uh, I don't pretend to know anything about astrophysics, but couldn't the planets change? I mean, uh, drift apart or, or something like that to throw this map off. According to the expanding universe model, all bodies in the universe are constantly moving further apart. So in the thousands of years since the Stargate was built... All the coordinates could have changed. All we have to do is correct for Doppler shift. 
Then I should be able to arrive at a computer model that will predict the adjustments necessary to get the gate working again. Okay. That made sense. <laughs> so. Let's go with 10,000 years ago. Those addresses were all put on the wall. And they all worked. I'll try and think of an analogy as we're going along. But I can't think of one at the moment. In that time... Um, the universe has been expanding and the planets have all been moving further away so the gates have all been moving further away so now uh, I don't know if they all moved away at the same rate it wouldn't make a difference I would for the starting point but the, the where they all intersect if they all move expand away from each other they all still intersect at the same location but say the starting point might move so uh, it's still a straight line ah so, uh, I didn't think about that <laughs> but it does uh, off the top of my head it kind of makes sense what she said that that's why they're not working when they're dialing them but she said they can make a uh, yeah they could work out the difference although what what would they do uh what so that if they've got six symbol seven symbols are they basically saying they would have to change the symbols to cope with the difference that doesn't make sense ah need to think about it that's a lot to think about so the Stargate can go other places. Well, I assumed it could from the the film. Otherwise, why would you have all those symbols? It didn't. That's what didn't make sense in the film. Um, let's say it's a telephone. Um, if you, if it was just the two gates, why would you have all those symbols and have to dial it? Um, it would just be one that you just pushed or something, and it would just make the connection. The fact that there are lots of different symbols means it acts like a telephone. So you dial different numbers to get to different phones, different locations. So it made sense that there were multiple gates. Um, but I know it wasn't really said in the film, but it does make sense. Oh, I'm going to assume not Earth. Well, obviously not good guys. They came through firing immediately. Where is, I think the weak spot's on their side. The armor's at the front and their head protects them, but they, on the side, I think they've got weak spots. That's the same, same one we saw on Earth. As is he. Good choice, Tilk. Perfect specimen. Oh, cool voice. So they took a boy on Earth in the film. Who may be the one? Okay, so that's kind of like the receiver for dialing the phone number. Don't remember seeing that in the uh, film. So, of course, they've taken uh, Daniel's wife. I think they got married in the film. Um, and the other kid who Jack has that link with. So they're both going to be, obviously, fired up to go and get them back. Ra is dead. Taupara! Ra, no. Ra. I saw. It took Shari. So it was Ra. My wife is out there, so is Skara. And the only way we're gonna get him back is for you to come home with us. For Reddy might have seen those coordinates. After we go through the Shapa Eye, you have to bury it like we did before and then leave this place. Then in one year, one year from this day, you take the cover stone away. Right. And I will try to bring Shari home. Okay, that's a good idea. So is that what's this is going to be all about now him well them trying to find Share and um, Skara I wouldn't want to go through first so we might be a bit too trigger happy uh, at the earth end okay so they bring down a a heavy door on the um, 
the those rooms that overlooked it all. It's a good idea. Protect it. Oh. That's our insurance against any more surprises. It's pure titanium. Hopefully impenetrable. Okay. That's a good idea. So they've got a shield. So if anyone tries to come through that they don't know, they put that up. I don't know what would happen. They come through and they can't pass through it. So I assume they're squashed. So it probably gets a bit messy on the other side. But yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. 